Eh, damos inicio formal a la reunión. Mientras, mientras eso ocurre, yo eh, aprovecho para saludar a nuestros amigos que están siguiendo esta reunión desde sus países en Zoom. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. Hola a todos. Gracias. Uh, señores y señores, muchas gracias. Y ahora me voy a seguir únicamente en español trabajo de nuestros amigos eh, traductores a quien agradezco. Agradezco particularmente, sentidamente, su presencia. Eh, ha sido muy difícil movernos en estos tiempos, por lo que se eh, valora enormemente el tiempo que han estado dispuestos a invertir para... Eh, ser parte de esta importante reunión. Y ya que están aquí, tengan por eh, seguridad, tengan por seguro que vamos a aprovechar al máximo su presencia. Eh, entonces, eh, eh, les pido pues que eh, se instalen como lo hacemos en las reuniones de GIFT, como en casa sabiendo que estamos entre amigos, tranquilos, eh, atentos, eh, participando y eh, con toda libertad de en cualquier momento levantar la mano, hacer una propuesta, eh, proposal. You can share an experience and mainly just paying attention to what the rest would like to share with us. We are going to be busy according to our agenda, but the idea is that we feel with a peace of mind and comfortable with among friends. Let us give just a couple of minutes more to uh, the secretary to formally start. I haven't introduced myself, but almost all of you, I had the pleasure to hug you, such a happiness to give you a hug. And my name is pa Pablo Guerrero, I'm Mexican, I live in Washington for uh, some years. I'm in charge of the uh, initiative, global initiative for the budgetary. And with me, I have the best company of my collaborators, my colleagues of the coordination team. They are a little far away. Let's see how we do. Let us give them a round of applause. Let's see how we do for them to be closer so that they are not so far. We have Aura, Marianne, Raquel, and we have also uh, joining the team Camila from here. We greet with all love Albertina, if uh, she is on screen. If she's not on screen, it's okay because she has deserved uh, the vacation. Keep closer to the group, probably later. Um, I also appreciate the technical team that is helping us in the communication with Zoom. And all this ado uh, makes me wonder, people in Zoom, can you hear us well? Well, so from Guanajuato, we have Lorena Caballero from the Secretariat of um, and Micaela, our friend Catarina. Thank you so much from the Catarina and Mijaela del Instituto. Eh, 
from the Institute of uh, Public Finances of Croatia, our friends from the Department of Budget and Administration, a little gift consultant. And for them, it's 9 p.m. So we appreciate they are uh, awake. Let us take a couple of minutes and then we will start. Under Secretary of um, Budget and Management in the Philippines, thank you for joining. You're very welcome, sir. And we can start. So we're gonna vamos empezar. Uh, Let us start. The Secretary will join and will share his remarks in a timely manner. There's no rush. We have three days to hear him. So let us start to really begin the enormous amount of experiences that we will be listening to and sharing with you. I appreciate profoundly <clears throat> Minister Juan Manuel Mestreto from the um, Ministry of Finances and Vice Minister Claudia Marcela, whom I invite to join me. Look, Marcela, we have a cozy room and there is a microphone. You can come here to the podium however you feel more comfortable. We have our friend and consultant of the Minister Leonardo Huitrago. Hospitality despite many uh, adversities, I'd say with a great alignment of stars that we were able to keep this meeting with the kind uh, hostness of the Ministry of Finances of Colombia, a noble and generous member of the network. We have just uh, seen national elections. We have just undergone a difficult transition that is ongoing still and also the presentation of budget made by our friends here. And finally, it happened that in the hotel, now they're holding the meeting with the uh, team that will take possession next uh, Saturday for the elect president. Thanks to the Colombians that have had exemplar transition of in the elections, thanks to our friends of the ministry, despite all those challenges and flaws. And despite many times uh, they thought about it, they uh, didn't cancel the meeting and they are today here. So I appreciate this enormous effort to speak on their commitment and uh, love to the network. So that is why I ask all my friends to uh, give a round of applause. Besides the ministry with all these roles, strategic role, with so much commitment that we have described, they are also hosts of our new members <clears throat> of the mayor of Bogota, mayor of the mayor's office of Bogota. We have found also 
the biggest of kindness, flexibility, adaptability, and we will see tomorrow, it's a day that them, themselves with the ministry will show us the enormous work they're performing in transparency and part, public trans, uh, participation. So I appreciate so much the mayor, the general secretary of the mayor's office, Maria Clemencia Perez, Indeed, yesterday we went to the mayor's office and with us, uh, she was uh, going upstairs uh, to the office, uh, the, the mayor of Bogota, and we said hello very quickly. We had the pleasure of doing it and we appreciate the finance secretary, uh, Juan Mauricio Ramirez, who will join us soon, uh, Patricia Rincón, a friend, uh, an old friend and the international team of the mayor's office, Ramirez and David Barón, all of them dedicated so this uh, event to be a whole success such a vitality of the network despite so many meetings on uh, during the pandemic and so many situations and issues you as champions have been uh, foresting the budgetary process that is notable that's uh, the strength of the network like your conviction perseverance and within the framework of the network the will to share your experiences and learn from others that hasn't suffered just a piece despite adversities and that makes us profoundly proud <clears throat> and confident that we are going to move on as a group of champions willing to learn, strengthening our network in order to achieve the main objective. Its main objective, that is to support ourselves when we are doing the efforts of the uh, public finances to make them more open and more accountable, to have more accountability as director of the network on behalf of my team, and that I will greet with uh, great love and pride Raquel Ferreira, Aura Martinez, Jean, Jean Marianne Fabian, Camila, who's with us in this event, and of course Albertina, on behalf of the team. I'd like to uh, state the privilege that represents for us to call you and be able to join us, to join, to get together. There's no, nothing more valuable than time. And these are the days that you are have been eager for us to be here for us and for the network have a great value. <clears throat> Let's see, we're, later we're going to see the agenda. Uh, by Jen, and we're going to have the Vice Minister of uh, Finances. It's a pleasure for me because since we met, it was a uh, Vice Director, Deputy Director, and we have seen that notable uh, career that makes me pre pre introduce her as Deputy Minister. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much, Juan Pablo, for your invitation. Thank you for attending this invitation. Welcome to this city, a little bit cold all this week, but warm for the people and welcoming all of you. Thank you for the network to choose Colombia, Bogota, for this meeting after the pandemic, after we uh, together, after we all we have lived in your country that has been hard, but well, we are st striving. So with new experiences and learnings all along <clears throat> these three years, almost still during the pandemic that we have overcome. Out of what we have done in the Ministry of Finances about openness, we met, as Juan Pablo said, 
Five years ago, when we started gathering, having these meetings in several sites, so for me, to come back and see many people, so what Pablo says, and hug you again after many years, it's uh, gratifying. So in these almost five years that we have been part of the network as the Ministry of Finances and uh, Directorate or Department of Budget, we have learned for us, it's been valuable, this contribution, each of these meetings, because in each of these meetings, we have taken little things from each country. And that is what this is about, to gather the experiences of the countries, the good practices, and these spaces have helped us. So in these spaces, in these five years, we have been able to achieve important continue advances in uh, openness in the development plan this government is about to finish it they finish next uh, sunday that is why you have seen in the hotel all the teams uh, all the handover for the other government this year on the development plan has imposed important challenges regarding transparency and regarding anti-corruption and anti-procedure and also some other topics that we have we will have the opportunity to show you in detail the implementation of tools imposed for the national development plan that are the budget different readings from the budget regarding the national plan of development that are important, three of them, that is gender equality or equity, peace construction or building, peace building from the uh, peace accords from the outlaw groups that we signed an important agreement and in budgetary issues, there were important milestones to create an institutionality <clears throat> upon the signature of the agreement on institutionality created for the implementation of the agreements and some important resources, additional ones for the implementation regarding rural equity and social issues. And another one important, that is the ethnic groups in Colombia. We have several groups. We are speaking about Afro-descendants, indigenous, uh, mixed races, and we have all the uh, tracing and, you know, openness portal, we can deliver information about the allo uh, allo allocation of these resources and how they have been identified in the traces. This afternoon, we're going to show you in detail the imp implementation of these tracer tracers. In 2017, no, I'm sorry, 2019, a job we performed for five, six years, we were able to change the classifier of the budget of the nation with international standards. Our measurement of the fiscal deficit is performed with the approach of the monetary fund of 1986, but all the tracers, we have been in all the process, uh, you know the ones who have been in the process of changing the approach of classification. It takes time. So the, our classification is in 2019, this is with the standards of the monetary fund from 2014, and we are members of the OECD and part of this great group of the OECD is to have the classifiers, measurements and accountability that is uh, in harmony with the manual of the handbook of 2014, the nation, we are decentralized. That is Bogota is a member. That is why Bogota is a member as subnational entity of the national budget and subnational, which is different with particularities for each of them. Nevertheless, this classification that started out as, as a nation uh, has gone also to the subnational. We have a harmonic budget with the nationals and we have the budget of the national uh, system of royalties that is the payment for the use 
of the environment, the natural, the use of natural resources and uh, the budget is apart and the classification of the budget in 2019, from 2019 is the handbook of 2014. And even the public universities and all the system of state universities, they are autonomous from the national government. They also approach and they said, hey, we ourselves as part of the modernization of our financial management is also part we have implemented this new classifier in the institution of higher education of the state and the country and regarding this we created a system that is called system of public financial management that it was to uh, take the three great systems that is budget treasury and the budget part and accountability and count accounting so that we could have the inclusion of the monetary data that can be taken from the information required from treasury accounting and we're doing that we were able after many years to uh, issue a policy document uh, for us those documents are approved by the president with the ministers <coughs> they are called compass document we have one of them where we state a roadmap of all this harmonization of the systems of financial management of the country in the last years in the country the country has generated a series of tools regarding openness anti-corruption and anti procedure and also the pandemic that i suppose that many of you had to undergo and the goal was to achieve and we did that also let me just comment on something i was appointed direct uh, director of budget in the end of 2019 march 2020 we all of us were uh in lockdown and we had to implement and you had to do that to all the procedures of budget that we did uh, so far completely in physical paper and physical paper in the month we had implemented all the procedure of budget online that is a learning we're going to continue like that about climate change and environmental issues, all the information that we're receiving, the uh, budget department is everything online. We do not receive anything in paper. We have to change our general archive and our all our system to do that online. So part of the bad thing of this budget is made us go forward in something that we believed it was not possible because I don't know in your country but because when you have the signature with stamp and fingerprint it, it, it looks like it is not valid but it's absolutely valid all the administ administra administrative actions uh, were received digitally so we were able to do it we also performed these last three years we change the page, we turn the page, and that helps with the help of all, because we are in contact, permanent contact with all the countries, and we are also monitoring part of the network is that to monitor what they are doing in other countries. We changed the, we turned the page this year, in the beginning of this year, we changed the, turn the page of the, the department. And we're going to show you the new portal of economic transparency that also, it has got, it has taken a turn. All the implementation, all the budget tracers in the equity of women, mainly that we started from zero in the ethnic and uh, peace building it was easier because we had a lot of information of the equity of women it was also with the help of many contacts that helped us <clears throat> uh, arrange this with the network. So my appreciation for all the work performed, we also, so see or saw a lot of international experiences for the tracer of women equity and all the tracers in general in a record time we implemented that on a year i don't say that a year is short but to get the agreement of all the entities and what we wanted to uh, measure with the tracer not only the resources but they are resources that are allocated that we can 
uh, trace and to see if they were executed or not. So that's a work in a year of the implementation of all the tracers that we can say that are absolutely implemented with a follow up, etc. So thanks to all this information that we have built along the way, you also see the World Survey of Open Open Budgets. We have improved a little bit. When we started with this, we realized that our country was not good at all in the ranking. So all of this I'm telling you also gave way to the fact that we saw that in the service and also the people who are assessing us if we are doing well or not on openness and the most recent survey that we saw in may this year we did well we are missing still i cannot say that we are perfectly sound you cannot say that you are perfect because you are going to lose because uh, you know you can always improve any of the experiences all oh, that is knowledge so again in pandemic we implemented a job that we had the opportunity to see and share with some countries we launched something that is called uh, Open Pandemic, all the research book that was well received. So we were able to implement it in the portal of uh, economic openness. We have all the tracers plus all the resources and the we can see the execution online of the resources allocated during the pandemic. So that is something that we were able to follow up. Something that the service showed is the citizen citizens budget. The ones who work for budget, you know, the le uh, lexical and the information is a little complicated because the citizens budget is to tell the citizen on their language the what the budget is and how it's made up is four or five pages document we know that uh, some people would not read the whole budget and we delivered last friday the budget is more than 1000 over 1000 pages of this to tell you that this network thanks to this network we have progressed a little bit on everything that has to do with openness anti-corruption and anti procedures we'll tell you i don't remember the launching of the new well i think it is on wednesday the wednesday yes wednesday tomorrow we're going to tell you what we did in the portal of openness. So you will see uh, firsthand what we are doing in the country. Thank you very much for being in the city. Tomorrow you will have the, the opportunity, thanks to the um, mayor's office, to go to a site. I don't know that that site. So, oh, that's horrible. I'm sorry. But I don't know that site. I am not from Bogota. Maybe that's the reason why. But we will have the opportunity to see some interesting experiences in Bogota that um, in some minutes the secretary will tell you about. So tomorrow we'll join and go uh, to uh, the, those locations. Thank you very much. Welcome you all. I hope you enjoy the stay in this country. Please enjoy everything we're going to learn out of all of you much. Bienvenido. Damos la bienvenida. Okay, we will welcome Juan Camilo Ramirez, Juan Manuel Ramirez, uh, the Secretary of Finance, and and I, and we are very grateful that you please uh, let us be in your city and the, as the new uh, member of this uh, council. The floor is yours. Well, thank you very much. 
just to um, try to let you know a little more about Bogota, I was there in my car and my uh, driver, my chauffeur took me uh, and there was a um, traffic jam there in the uh, uh, 7th Avenue and then basically I just uh, had to take on the, the bicycle off and basically take one of the um, the paths for bicycle and it was uh, for a number of kilometers and we were able to reach here. Basically, that's part of the, what we do here in Bogota for these uh, bicycle paths so that you can maybe see that in many parts of the city. And this is the uh, opportunity to have a sustainable mobility in the city. And I just wanted to uh, start with this because I am, we are very pleased that, and that you are here. And thank you very much for all uh, all these events and this invitation, especially to Juan Pablo and of course, uh, director of uh, a budget and with with uh, with who we have worked uh, very close. And uh, today we are part of the GIF network. And um, this is a fundamental topic. When the, at the beginning of this major uh, period, one of the bets of the majors uh, was to have a environmental and social contract for for Bogota, how to do that? More or less like 27% of the GDP of the country is here in the city. So it's bigger than Bolivia's GDP or Salvador's GDP. Has certain challenges in terms of productivity, that uh, problem in terms of, uh, for example, uh, congestion and traffic jams are, are really difficult. And we have also equity challenges here. Almost we have here like a space that is break up in Bogota. And the people that live farther from work, those are, are that the carry the, the, the highest cost. And of course, they face more challenges and difficulties. And here we have a big challenge to improve equity. And in this sense, one of the purposes was precisely to how to actually have a social contract, a social contract that would also imply the participation of people. So basically there, we started to look, we had like two things. And the first one is like, for the finance point of view, we insisted on the cost and expense uh, um, quality. Bogota is a city that has high um, expenses in terms of, of compared to the other parts of the country. And that's why it has happened many times that resources are there for being uh, for for the for the for, for being uh, for the, the expenses, but basically, what is the quality of that expense? Is basically we don't do that, and that's something that we definitely need to do. And on the other side, we have the open the, the transparency uh, of uh, the citizenship to an open government to have a precise information so that the citizens can know where this uh, money is and where they are represented. For that purpose, we have been developing and improving a fiscal uh, observatory from the major office. So just to know with a uh, specific space uh, uh, was just to identify the, the, uh, the expenses made uh, or the investments made in income in schools, uh, gender equity, health, and actually they can see the, their district and of course to see in, in the even in the smaller in a smaller level they can see the, how these expenses are made so this is one of the fundamental topics here and of course we were hit by the pandemic and of course we did something similar to, uh, what to what the government national government did and you know where income decreased like by seven eight percent by 2020, and we had a counter cyclic policy there. We said, okay, Bogota has a, a debt level in a reasonable way, and now we are going to increase debt level. And of course, we did it that way. Public debt, uh, in co compared to the Bogota's DGP, is 1.3 percent. It's very little. And it is general like that. So when we compare that to the national government, it was up to 60%. It may be 
now 7%. And this is part of the fiscal discipline that this country implemented in a very way after the crisis uh, of the last century in which we had a, a different territory entities they part of the superavit and they receive transfers uh, for big amounts uh, for the national budget in the case of bogota we were and now it, the, the level is uh, or the depth is 2.4 we increase that but we increased uh, the, the investment by 30 percent compared to the previous year so it was a tip uh, contra, con, typical contra, con, counter cyclical uh, policy, and of course that all has helped to uh, in, uh, improve us uh, poverty and economic uh, disacceleration. At the same time, we have a relationship, more or less, but to what um, Marcel said, we have like a mirror of what the company of the, what the the nationalists and the, uh, the government is doing gender, health, and ethnic groups, as well as for the young. And we are also implementing that. So at the end, what we expect is to have a city, and that's the model, to have um, a city that is closer to the citizens from the uh, social, economic, and political administration, we, in which we have a city in the, within a range of 20, 30 minutes, they can actually have what they need in terms of work, uh, sourcing, and access to social uh, services, public services, schools, culture, any. And like a decentralized city, not only concentrated in a certain points, but in more decentralized way, that are actually are allows uh, improving the quality of life. And that's more or less like the policy of the national uh, governments. The cities are there. We are very close. They are at home and they speak to us. We can go there and we can so we can easily reach them. So at the end, so what we can do in the in terms of transparency and the structure of the fiscal structure and the effectiveness of the of the state of fiscal. So what we can do is that it depends what what happens at the national level. Of but of course, how it is landed in the local governments, so it can be actually connected to the real uh, citizen that is there. And we are there, we are like the high lights uh, or like the traffic lights that are turning on or off when we have there the citizens and here we have the national governments. And of course, we wanted to welcome all, uh, you all. We are very happy to have uh, on-site uh, uh, events because we we have uh, certain uh, benefits and options with uh, online events. But it's definitely to very uh, very good to see each other, and that's something that is kind of be replaced so easily. So that's something that I just wanted to share with you. And thank you so much. Thank you very much to the Secretary of Finance. I may, I want to say something that is after, after seven measures uh, using your bicycle, the, the thing is that you have had this, uh, you have made this speech here. I think that is a good example here. I would be definitely uh, in a totally bad condition after that. So I'm going to give the A colleague, so overview of the agenda. So I'm going to say goodbye by for the first part of the session. But before that, I would like to say here that I'm very excited. That of course I am very happy to that you are on here. But of course I am very happy to have here the physical presence of two institutions that are the leading uh, uh, leading institutions of our organization. They are part of the board committee. Those are the elite stewards. We have in the, in the physical presence here of Salenda Paradanaña and Lorena Rivero from the IMF. 
Gracias. Thank you very much. I'm especially with my heart, I thank my old friend, Warren Kravchik, director of the IBP, for being here with us in person, which I know is a great sacrifice and investment for him in this very difficult year for him and his leadership. Thank you, Warren, so much for being in this meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Juan Pablo, and thank you again uh, to the speakers who came before me for welcoming everyone to the 2022 Gifts Tours General Meeting. I'm Marian Fabian. I'm the Communications and Outreach Coordinator of GIFT. It's nice to meet so many of you in person. Buenos dias, and um, good morning, and another good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone who are joining us on Zoom. Especially good evening to our colleagues from the Philippines. I, I used to be part of the Department of Budget and Management, so I, I say hello to you, Sec. Rolando Toledo on Zoom. Hello, sir. Um, if you can confirm that you can hear us now in the English channel, um, that would be great. Um, so I have the pleasure of sharing with you what to expect in the next three days here in Bogota and of course with our colleagues online on Zoom through our hybrid sessions. Um, let's go right into it. Not sure why the, okay, slowly. Thank you so much. Um, right now, we're almost done with the opening session. But after this, uh, I have the pleasure of being with you again in facilitating the gift network updates uh, from Stewart's hybrid session, where we all get a chance to provide um, updates on our milestones and plans on uh, promoting fiscal transparency and public participation in the budget process. We'll do a little workshop. Um, offline, here in person, and online um, later in this session. And after this session, we take a little 15-minute break for those here in the room of, and for those who are with us on Zoom. We have coffee here on the side, and we will have a bit of snacks outside. Am I right? <laughs> and um, we'll be serving those to you uh, after hybrid session one. And then at 11.15 Bogota time, we'll uh, start officially with the Stewards General Assembly where we'll be uh, providing updates on the gift uh, work plan for the next several years. And we hope to consult that with you. We also hope to uh, provide updates on the gift um, subnational government membership and some updates also on the tax transparency principles, which we are working on for the past year or so, approximately. And then we take lunch after hybrid session two. Our lunch venue is located just across the session hall. For those who are with us here in the conference room, we will have um, signages to lead you to the lunch venue. And this, still, you cannot find it. You can approach any one of us, and then we'll take you right to where the food is. So that's very important. And then um, in the afternoon, we'll have hybrid session three, where we'll be tackling fiscal transparency and cross cutting priorities, uh, responsive budgeting. After that, we go directly to session four. We hope to finish around 5.30. Um, well, we'll expect to go a little bit over time because we'll have a few announcements also for our preparations for day two. But if we finish early, uh, and we hope to finish at, on time at 5.30. So um, for hybrid session four, today we have, we'll discuss uh, key highlights on the recently released uh, Open Budget Survey 2021 and of course the Global Data Barometer Public Finance module and that's pretty much day one but at the end of the day we'll be providing more logistical information um, for what's going to happen on day two. But speaking of day two, let's go through. Next slide please. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Um, let's go through where we'll go tomorrow. It's a very exciting activity. Tomorrow is um, all about Infield's visit. We'll go out of the hotel, explore Bogota with all of you. But uh, unfortunately, for those who are joining us virtually, uh, very sorry to say we're not able to set up 
the hybrid session for you to follow us on day two. It's complicated enough for us uh, to arrange it and set it up today in the conference room. So it's uh, quite challenging to do that for tomorrow. But we hope you can join us again on day three where we'll live stream again and have our hybrid uh, session on Zoom. So just to uh, provide an overview of what will happen tomorrow, where we will go, we arrive at 8 o'clock uh, at Ciudad Bolivar. But later on, uh, we'll have more announcements on what time we will meet because we have to be there. We have to be at the lobby around 6.50 a.m. <laughs> we have to wake up early just to arrive at the venue at 8 o'clock. We'll provide more um, information about that later. Um, at Ciudad Bolivar, uh, our Bogota colleagues can chime in and correct me if I'm, I'm right or correct. I will go around Portal Tunal. We'll take you to Parque Elimani, Estacion Manitas, where we'll have the pleasure of uh, witnessing the projects on Sistema de Cuidado and the Red Super Cade. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it uh, correctly. <laughs> and then we'll go to Estacion El Paraíso, and then we'll go to the Museum of the Museo de la Ciudad Autoconstruida. And then we go take lunch. We go back here to the hotel. And then after lunch, we proceed directly to the archives building here in Bogota, where we'll have peer learning sessions with the Algaldia de Bogota colleagues and our colleagues from the Ministry of Finance and Public Credit of Colombia. Then that's day two. And then we'll have more information for you later about that. Day three. Click. There? No. Next slide, please. <laughs> Sorry, I'll just have it voice activated. Thank you, tech team. <laughs> You're the best. Um, so for day three, um, we hope to end with three more hybrid sessions for our last day. So we start with a fully virtual panel, but well, all of, of course, all of us are here, but our panelists uh, will be coming from all over the world. These are the winners of the user, uh, gift user engagement sessions in different countries, specifically the Better Budget Data Quest Exploradatos and the data rallies from home that has been conducted in the past uh, year by different countries. And then... And hybrid session six, it's a good way to wrap up what we've had uh, the pleasure of witnessing for tomorrow on public participation initiatives here in uh, Bogota and Colombia. We'll also be go uh, discussing uh, two uh, public participation uh, uh, approaches and uh, different country experiences, specifically on the Fiscal Openness Accelerator Project and the SPARC Project of the International Budget Partnership. And uh, for the morning, we end uh, with a hybrid session on GIFT or PFM in the next decade. It's a very interesting session where we'll um, discuss and reflect on the challenges and the opportunities for us to explore and uh, consider in the next 10 years um, agenda of the GIFT network and also um, what uh, issues to consider in the international public financial management space in the next decade. So we hope um, to, uh, to have your participation also in this session as it's very, very uh, interesting discussion that we're sure to have. And then we'll go for lunch again and come back and close the event officially. So that's pretty much the three days of the uh, Stewards General Meeting. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, for those who are joining us on Zoom, please don't hesitate to type in uh, in the chat box, if you have any questions about our agenda, um, you can access it online, fiscaltransparency.net slash SGM-2022. We'll be flashing it on screen later. Can we go to the next slide, please? Yeah, okay. So just we before diving right into hybrid session one, just a few reminders on house rules etiquettes and ensuring safety for all. Next slide, please. Yes, thank you. Um, we all have interpretation in the room and on the Zoom um, uh, platform. We have it in English, Spanish, French in the room. If you need a headphone, the, the, inter uh, the interpreter's table is there. You can request it there. And we also provide Wi-Fi here in the conference room. The network is Tekendama underscore meeting. 
and the access code is budget. So you can connect online using this uh, Wi-Fi network. And please do go ahead, take photos, uh, share, fo uh, share it online, and tag us, please. For washrooms, you can just go outside, take a turn to the right. You can find easily the toilets. And uh, we ask everyone to put um, your phones uh, on silent mode. And for those who are joining us on Zoom, please uh, do uh, maintain your mic on mute. And we will be recording, of course, all of the sessions and then we'll be uploading photos later on social media. So if you do not want to have your photos published and you don't want to be tagged, please do let us know. Also, uh, well, we know COVID is still ongoing. In Bogota, I know it's not a protocol to wear masks, even in closed spaces, but IBP recommends that we all wear masks. So if you need a mask, we have it available at the registration area. We also have alcohol available for you at the registration area and at our coffee, coffee um, area here. And if anyone requires a COVID test um, to get back to their home countries, for those who are joining us in person, please do let us know. Uh, we can schedule that for you. But only if you're actually required. Not if you just want to, then we cannot <laughs> assist you with that. Um, okay. Now, time and place. Um, for the hybrid sessions, day one and day three, in person, everything will take place here in this conference venue at Monserrate, 17th floor. And of course, online, it will take place via Zoom. For day two, it will take place at Ciudad Bolivar and at the archives building. We will have buses to take us around. So please don't worry about that. But uh, we will be doing a bit of walking. So uh, make sure to wear comfortable clothes, bring water, bring sunscreen. There you go. Um, back? Yeah, okay. So for duration, today we might go a little bit over time. Hopefully not. Uh, but we expect to finish at 5.30 uh, at most every day. And then we aim to finish early on the third day, around 4 o'clock or even earlier, we're going to be finished um, with our meetings. For breaks, we allocate one hour lunch breaks every day. And then in the morning, we'll have 15 minutes to stretch, to go to the toilet, um, have coffee, and then coffee will be also available throughout the day. Next slide, please. Right. So as I've mentioned earlier, Everything, um, all of the relevant materials, presentations, and later on video recordings of the sessions will be uploaded online via our SGM webpage. It's here. And on your kits, you will see a QR code like this. So if you have a QR code reader, you can just scan it and then it will lead you directly to the SGM webpage. And of course, we'll be posting on social media. Hello. Two, hashtag gift 2022 and these are our social media handles flashed on screen next slide please okay i think that's it so thank you very much but i think i'm still going to facilitate the next session yes but uh